99.1 one, The Whale. Jim Free and you hanging out in the free zone. Joined on the phone by Reverend Bob Levy. Bob, how are you? Doing great, man. How you doing, Jim? Yeah, pretty good. And for people that don't know, I mean, you've been doing this uh, quite a while. Uh, you've been on radio a long time, too. Going back to uh, how many years with Howard Stern and uh, all the other things you did. Tell, tell people yeah, that, that I, might not know who you are like about your background. Well, basically, uh, I started off with Kid Chris first, uh, doing radio with him in uh, California, then San Antonio, then uh, he came to Philadelphia, and I uh, was on the Howard Stern Show for 10 years, I was on Opie and Anthony, the Artie Lang Show, Fox News, every, basically everything. Uh, you know, just having fun, you know, yeah. got to get out there. There you go. And uh, being out on the road doing stand-up comedy, how long, how long has that been going on? Uh, about 25 years, man. And it's the best job in the world, even you know, even though you know, some of these comedians today think they're really funny and they do stuff like uh, Kathy Griffith did, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. whatever her name is. Uh, yeah. You know, she's, she's a mess. Even, even Trump's head looks better than her. She's so ugly, you know? I mean, she shouldn't be poking fun at anyone. It looks like she got the ugly stick and smashed herself in the face. <laughs> you know, keep out of politics. Let's make sure that everyone's together and basically, you know, work to make the country better and not tear it apart. Yeah, I mean, it's so polarizing. I mean, that whole, you know, don't talk about church or religion. You know, like, <laughs> that was always the, the go-to. But nowadays, with especially with social media, I mean, it's like, what side of the fence are you on? Why? Why do we have to know? You know, I don't know. I Whatever. Yeah, it's like it's like it's your, it's your opinion. That's exactly. all it is. You know exactly. what I mean. But once you take it too far, you know there there is you know taking it too far. If you're a public figure, figure about you know the president, yep. you know if Obama this happened to Obama, forget about it. Yep. Everybody would have been fired. <laughs> I mean, Twitter would have been fired. Everybody. <laughs> That's funny. You know, Bob, there's, a, there's a double standard. There's yeah. a double standard in this country, and it's always going to be that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of part of President Trump too was before he became President Trump, it was a joke for so many years with the you know like the you know, and I, I think that's part of it is that people feel they could still take pop shots at him from you know back in the days when he was declaring bankruptcy and everything else with the hair and you know, but now he's the president. Yeah, the he whole, still deserves some respect, you know. Yeah, but the whole thing is is that he got to be president, exactly. and he had no background. Exactly. That is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and Hillary's still complaining why she lost. You know why she lost? Because she came in second place. <laughs> and sorry, but you don't get a trophy for second place. Yeah. And nobody should get a trophy. No kids should get trophies just because they play. When I play, I got a trophy because I was the best. There you go. Not because I was playing right field and my pants fell down. <laughs> Absolutely. Reverend Bob Levy, uh, going to be in town. You're coming uh, Saturday night. You're going to be up at Touch of Texas on Upper Front Street with a couple other comedians. And uh, it, it, you've been in Binghamton before, have you not? Yes, I have. And uh, the people are great. Man. I haven't been up there in years, so I'm so looking forward to this. I'm telling you, you people come out, you're going to have a good time. I'm bringing John Kensel with me. And uh, Jerry Sylvanic put on uh, an opening act, mm -hmm. a very pretty young girl. And uh, it's going to be a great show. And I heard they have a Beatles cover band afterwards. Yeah, it's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but uh, hey, it works, you know. It's a full uh, night hey, of entertainment. Yeah, that, that's what it should be. You know what I mean? Exactly. Who else is going to do shows like that, you know? Exactly. I mean, you, you're going to see shows in town like, uh, Mr. Chucklehead, you know that that's the that's the competition that night. I think we can handle it. You come and see the best show in the world, and then you get to dance to the Beatles, and maybe I'll even sing a song to you, or maybe we play the bass because I can do many things. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Now you said yeah. you've been doing this for twenty five years. Is it is it hard to come up with new material, or does it naturally flow from you? Like, tell tell yeah. us the process of coming up with some new stuff. Well, well you know, anything you see, you know, could be. A premise. So you kind of just write it down or keep it in your memory, and then you just kind of put the bit together and you just try it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and if it doesn't work more than you know two times, it's not funny, you know. Yeah. But you know, that it, 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 it you have to constantly see. With my mind, I can go up there with an hour just blank, you know, not do anything for my act and just make believe it is. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I make the show for the people in the audience. It ain't about for me. It's for the people in the audience that came. So I 
set up my act for them. I watch what's going on, and it's their night, not mine. But I'll enjoy it just as much. There you go. Reverend Bob Levy coming to town uh, Saturday night, Touch of Texas on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Now, uh, Bob, you, are there any young comedians that you look at and you go, wow, this 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 person's really good? I, I'm really impressed with them. Or Yeah, I mean, I've, I've met, you know, many, you know, I, you know, in, in my time, you know. The last one I worked with was Pete Davidson. Like, you know, he was. He's come to my house, do radio, you know, we used to go over stuff and he got, he got picked, uh, Nick Cannon picked him up and he goes, should I tell him you manage me? And I'm like, no, just take it, go, <laughs> you know, and get out of here. And he's, he's a great kid. And, you know, he, he, he's older now. He was, I think he was 17 or 18 at the time. But uh, he's doing great. He's on Saturday Night Live and touring all over the country. Oh, very cool. Now, what, what made you want to be, become a comedian? Because I I didn't want to kill people for a living. I had no other <laughs> skills. I mean, truthfully, I, I mean, I was landscaping at the beginning, you know, uh-huh. which is when you're, you know. Landscaping, 18, not manscaping. 19. He said landscaping. Yes. Yes. Well, I manscape, too. Well, I have somebody do it. They come every Tuesday. But, uh, you know, when I used to go out all night, you know, and that was the partying days. And I would go to work dressed up because that was when you like kind of went to discos in the early 80s, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you know, so I, and they would yell at me and I'd be puking in people's backyards and they would send me home. It was funny. They go, go in his truck and lay down. <laughs> but so, that's what it is. I, I don't know. You know, I can, t- and I painted. That's all we did. We did landscaping and painting and, you know, and that was it. So then, I got into comedy because at the bar we hung out, it was my job to make fun of the people that came in that we didn't know so that they would fight us. Uh-huh. And, and it basically, my friend said to me, he goes, you're pretty funny. You should try an open mic because Jackie the Joke Man has one in West Orange, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I, I put together 10 minutes. Next thing you know, two years later, I'm headlining with 25 minutes. So was that was that first night? Was that like a home run, or did you? Was it bumpy? It was. Or? You know what? It was, thank God it was because oh. the second time was horrible. <laughs> That's how I got the name. I, it was so horrendous. It, it looked like I kicked all their mothers in the face with my boots. <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, then. Then when it was so uncomfortable, when I got off, Jackie the joke man went back on stage and he goes, "Well, have about a hand for the reverend, <laughs> Bob Levy," <laughs> and that's how I got the name. Oh wow, very cool. Yeah, uh, so I mean, yeah. I'm so looking forward. You got to come out Saturday night because I'm telling you, you're going to have fun too. We're going to kick ass, and it's, it's going to be great to be back in Binghamton. Absolutely, Reverend Bob Levy coming to Binghamton, uh, Touch of Texas on Upper Front Street in Binghamton Saturday night. Uh, he, two other comedians, and then uh, a Beatles tribute band afterwards. So uh, a night of fun yeah. all together. Now, it's a whole night. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to leave and go somewhere else afterwards. And I heard this place is amazing. It's did, huge. Did you just go there? Yeah. Uh, it's huge, right? Yeah, yeah. It used to be a Magic City Music Hall. Actually, it was a grocery store at one point. Then it became a, a oh. music hall, and uh, it was huge. And then uh, Touch of Texas took it over. So it's a, it's a huge and, stage. And even Donald Trump said it's huge. Exactly. Huge. It's huge. <laughs> and now I, I heard they have like all these hot like girls dressed up like, you know, Texas girls. Like, uh-huh. right? Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I, I, but if oh, that's I, the case, I'm not going to be watching you. I'm going to be watching them. I know. I, I, I'm going to be watching them. I'm not going to be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You'll have to keep you know, asking the audience, be, where was I yeah, on that joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, whoa, hey, oh man, if they have those Daisy Duke shorts, oh, you God. cannot, oh my God, those yeah. shorts, God, I missed, I missed the 70s, the late 70s and the 80s when they wore that. Oh yeah, yeah, if they're, if oh. they're wearing that, I have to leave my wife home, but anyway, all right, Reverend oh, Bob, if people, uh, you have a website that people can go check out your stuff? Well, check out my Facebook, because my, my web guy sucks, you know what I mean, okay. he's very lazy, yeah. and uh uh, I have uh, three Facebooks that are Bob Levy, right. and you'll see because they're all I post the same stuff on all of them. And I have a fan page called uh, the Reverend Bob Levy, and also I'm on Twitter at the Rev Bob 
at the Rev Bob Levy, and I follow everybody back because I'm a nice guy. I'm not an all about me kind of guy. Look what I wrote. I'm a comedian. I'm cool. I don't need to talk to you. I talk to everybody. Fans are the best. There you go. And no severed heads, right? No, 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 on my page. <laughs> Reverend Bob let's, see, let's see what happens to Kathy uh, Griffin. If she does really good with it, I'll be working on something. <laughs> there you go. Well, she already lost one job, but uh, yeah, she'll probably end up somewhere else, I'm sure. Reverend Bob Levy, uh, thanks, thanks for calling in, and we'll see you this Saturday night up at Touch of Texas on Upper Front Street. You got it. Be there or be square. I came up with that just now. <laughs>